good day dear children happy to come back to see you all through this uh, online class coming to the unit 2 supplementary reader life of pi by eon martel imagine that uh, you are uh, going on a trek or an adventure it requires uh, grit and a strong will to survive the odds and emerge unscathed, isn't it? Most importantly, you should carry an emergency kit. Uh, this uh, unit, when we talk about, just remember, uh, we discussed uh, last week the class, what? Hmm? Tenzing Norgay. How uh, he went and uh, touched the peak of the Himalayas, Mount Everest, isn't it? So that is also an adventure called Depression in Mountain Chain, a pass. So the summit, Edmund Hillary and Tenzin Norgay, how they reached. The same way here also another adventure. But this is quite different as I told you earlier. But when you go for uh, any adventuring, expedition, trekking, one of the things you carry with you, a list we have, one by one let us see. And what is this adventure that also we are going to discuss. Before uh, starting the class, we would have the word of prayer. Then we begin the class, children. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Lord, help the children to understand uh, the reality of the life. When they come across uh, a crucial situation like this, let them come out of that. Uh, let them be filled with the heavenly wisdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, children, uh, here it is an uh, abridged version of the famous Kennedy and Fantasy Adventure novel uh, titled The Life of Pi by Ian Martel and it was published in 2001. Okay. The protagonist is uh, Pison Molitor Pi Patel. P R O T A G O N I S T. How to say? Protagonist. Yes. And uh, protagonist means the important role, the heroic character of the story. So, who is uh, uh, hero of the story is Pi, that is Pison Molitor. Patel. And uh, Indian boy from Pondicherry, he survives 227 days after a shipwreck while stranded on a lifeboat in the Pacific Ocean with a Bengal tiger named Richard Parker. Okay, this is the story. And uh, uh, we have uh, a movie also. On this, before uh, going into this, let us uh, look about the writer, about the author. Jan Martel was born in Spain to French Canadian parents. Martel's father worked as a diplomat, and the family moved to Costa Rica, France, Mexico, and Canada during Martel's childhood. He grew up speaking both French and English. Uh, Martel studied philosophy at Trent University in uh, Ontario and later spent a year in India visiting religious sisters and zoos. Okay, And his first three books received a little critical or popular attention but with the publication of Life of Pi in 2001, a martel became uh, internationally famous and he was awarded the man booker prize in 
2002. So, since it is related to the life and the crucial uh, a situation, when you face a crucial situation, how do you handle things? So, to teach that, he has written a beautiful novel. And since he was uh, uh, staying here in India, that paved him a path to write the particular novel. So, coming to the glossary, Belch is expel air noisily. Uh, flotsam is debris, the waste material floating in the sea or river. A tarpaulin means a heavy waterproof sheet, a kind of a plastic sheet. An incredible, uh, have you ever heard uh, this uh, term? Incredible India. Incredible means unbelievable. A conundrum is a riddle and asphyxiation means uh, due to uh, death, due to lack of oxygen. So when people uh, are lacking oxygen, proper oxygen to the brain, to the cells, they face death. Uh, um, especially during uh, trekking, mountaineering, uh, uh, diving, swimming in the water. All these situations, they face this particular part. Putrid is rotting and guys is pretense, a, a pretending oneself. And cauldron is a large bowl or pot. And splinters means a sharp, long sharp fragment of material, often wood. And plausible means a probable or likely Acceptable reason is called plausible. Unambiguous means a clear. And supplication is a humble request or prayer. Glisten is shown. Gunnel, a upper edge of the side of a boat. And gurgling means a kind of sound when water is drunk fast. This is gurgling, children. We have gargling. Yes, this is gargling. Okay, coming to the supplementary reader. Uh, the beauty of a supplementary reader is children. This is an uh, extensive reader of English. When you read, it has to reach your mind. It has to speak to your mind. Okay. Uh, so, let me give you uh, the narration. The summary of the story. Then let me read for you and you can enjoy listening. Choose the 10 most essential items from the box below and complete the table. Now, lots and lots of items are given here. When you go for a trekking. Yes, when you go for picnic, when you go for excursion. What are the things you take with you? Yes, if you go often uh, on a tour, uh, automatically you will have a list of things might, might be written in the diary or uh, you would have uh, typed and uh, saved it. When you uh, open it, you can have a list. So, according to the list, you can take and travel, isn't it? So, what are the <coughs> things you have to carry? Non-perishable food you will take now, what is non-perishable, non-spoilt food? And newspaper, bean bag for the a pillow like, tab you can take, flashlights, whistle to signal for uh, any help, and a can you will take, can opener, shampoo, utensil, vessels, soap, camera, radio, uh, matches in uh, case of uh, emergency we can use this uh, matches, magazines to kill the boredom uh, time, books you take, uh, paper towels we need, napkins, tissue papers, batteries we need and uh, light uh, candy pen and notepad a deodorant, water bottles, toothbrush of course and toothpaste of course 
and first aid kit we need uh, fruits you have to headphones goggles and uh, candles money yes of course tube and tent and buy me bag okay in order to dispose the lighter candy pen and notepad we have seen whistle with ah, okay paper plates paper cups use and throw charger we need knife we need mouthwash we need umbrella a mobile phone of course slippers warm blanket so all these you have to carry with you so when you are going for the trekking you can fill it up at least 10 uh, uh, things from the box and you can fill the table share your list with your friend now let us uh, come back to the story see group of uh, animals and the people family members they were uh, traveling in the ship okay now shipwreck accident takes place uh, usually when uh, uh, the voyages we say they go on a voyage in the ship they will have life boats children when uh, any problem comes when any dangerous situation comes automatically they will take this life boats and they save their life now what happened the boy got separated from the group and he found a life boat and he is getting escaped from the death actually but one side he was escaped the other side he was trapped how i was alone who is the narrator he himself is a narrator i was alone and orphaned alone i was uh, not with my parents in the middle of the pacific hanging on to an oar an adult tiger in front of me sharks beneath me a storm raging about me had i considered my prospects in the light of reason i surely would have given up and let go of the oar hoping that i might drown before being eaten but i don't recall that i had a single thought during those first minutes of relative safety i didn't even notice a day break i held on to the oar i just held on god only knows why so i was in the life boat in front of me a bengal a tiger majestically sitting and i know very well that i am going to be eaten by it before uh, being eaten uh, if i could uh, uh, no jump out of the uh, boat life boat it will be better for me so Uh, richard parker is a character of the adult uh, bengal tiger so pai was all alone and orphaned in the middle of the pacific ocean the elements allowed me to go on a living the lifeboat did not sink richard parker kept out of the sight the sharks prowled out did not attack the waves splashed me but did not pull me off I watched the ship as it disappeared with much burbling and belching. Lights flickered and went out. I looked about for my family, for survivors, for another lifeboat, for anything that might bring me hope. There was nothing, only rain. A marauding waves of black ocean, the life-threatening waves of the black ocean. and the flotsam of tragedy the darkness melted away with a sky from the sky the rain stopped i could not stay in the position i was in forever i was cold my neck was sore from holding up my head and from all the craning i had been doing my back hurt from the leaning against the life boy and uh, i need 
to be a higher up if I were to see another lifeboat. In the morning, I could not move. I was pinned by weakness to the tarpaulin. Even thinking was exhausting. I applied myself to thinking straight at length. As slowly as a caravan of camels crossing a desert, some thoughts came together. I thought a sustenance for the first time. I had not had a drop to drink or a bite to eat or a minute of sleep in three days. Finding this obvious explanation for my weakness brought me a little strength. See, in the lifeboat, though I got the lifeboat to escape, but in front of me a big danger was sitting majestically, Mr. Richard Parker, Bengal Tiger. Now, waves are very rough. Sharks started uh, um, swimming up, and uh, but nothing uh, uh, took over me. But now, I felt very tired, weak. You know why? Because I didn't have nothing to eat and I didn't have water to drink and I cannot sleep because of the big majestic uh, uh, friend sitting in front of me, Richard Parker. Richard Parker was still on board. In fact, he was directly beneath me. Incredible, unbelievable that such a thing should need consent, uh, 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 the permission to be true. The truth should be true. But it was only after much deliberation upon assessing various mental items and points of view that I concluded that it was not a dream or a delusion or a misplaced memory or a fancy or any other a falsity but a solid true thing witnessed while a weakened highly agitated state. The truth of it would be confirmed as soon as I felt well enough to investigate how I had failed to notice for two and a half days a 450 pound Bengal tiger in a lifeboat 26 feet long was a conundrum I would have to try to solve later. When I had more energy, the fear the very hard work uh, surely made Richard Parker the largest a stowaway proportionally speaking in the history of navigation. From tip of nose to tip of tail he took up over a third of the length of the ship he was on. Oh my god! The ship, the lifeboat it was like a few feet we could say that uh, uh, the width and the uh, feet around uh, 30 people can be uh, accommodated in the particular lifeboat. So this was the uh, real uh, size of the lifeboat and uh, it was written in the um, uh, corner of the boat. But uh, three fourth of that place was occupied by the Richard Parker and uh, I could not do anything at all. Now what else I could? I was very weak to fight against the Richard Parker. Even if it wanted to eat me, I had to give myself to the Richard Parker. You might think I lost all hope. At that point, I did. Yes, I lost my hope. See, you can see the Richard Parker and with a furious face ready to uh, swallow me. And as a result, I perked up. I added up uh, and felt much better. We see that in sports all the time, don't we? The tennis challenger starts strong but soon loses confidence in this playing. The champion racks up the games. But in the final set, when the challenger has nothing left to lose, he becomes a relaxation, relaxed again. Insouciant and daring. And suddenly he is playing like a devil. 
and the champion must work hard to get those last points. So it was with me to cope with the hyena seemed remotely possible, but I was so obviously outmatched by Richard Parker that it wasn't even worth worrying about. With a tiger abroad, my life was over. That being settled, why not do something about my parched throat? I could not drink because there was no water. No food, so I couldn't eat. Now I could not sleep because not only Parker, Hyena was with me and for me this Hyena was not a bigger problem because bigger than the Hyena, Richard Parker was also accompanied in that lifeboat. My throat was uh, dried up and I could not do anything at all. Okay. So, I think it's going to be a um, very uh, a challenging uh, thing at voyage for a pie to travel with both the wild animals. Uh, I don't know with the courage he uh, overcame that and uh, he survived or not. What happened to this uh, Bengal tiger and hyena? That is the climax of the story. Let us see tomorrow or in the next class children. Hope you enjoyed uh, this part. Imagine now you are there in the lifeboat and how you are going to manage without food, without water and without peacefulness. Okay, but whenever you have uh, a dangerous situation, uh, take always uh, the help from the experienced people and uh, the God one who is above will help you to come out of the situation. Thank you children. Stay blessed. May God bless you.